Hi everyone, my name is Bill Curtis Davidson and I co-direct the Partnership on Employment and Accessible Technology, also known as PEAT, funded by the U.S. Department of Labor's Office of Disability Employment Policy. As a founding member of XR Access, PEAT aims to help ensure that immersive workplace technologies are born accessible. Today, I am honored to introduce this year's keynote by Accenture, and I'm joined by Liz Hyman. Thanks, Bill, and hello, everyone. As Bill said, my name is Liz Hyman, and I serve as the CEO of the XR Association, also known as XRA. We're a nonprofit industry trade association representing the broad ecosystem of the XR industry. We promote the responsible development and thoughtful advancement of virtual, augmented, and mixed reality. And we have been a proud strategic advisor to the XR Access Initiative. Last year, Pete and XRA collaborated on a joint white paper, Inclusive XR in the Workplace, that highlights the potential of XR to support inclusive and accessible work environments across industries. This white paper is designed to help orgs navigate the adoption of immersive tech as part of their digital transformation. It outlines how accessible immersive tech can help employers upskill and empower an increasingly diverse workforce, especially in high growth, high demand jobs. Bill, I want to thank Pete for collaborating with XRA on this very important white paper, which can help orgs accelerate their digital transformations with disability inclusion in mind. And when they do so, benefits like improved job training and enhanced collaboration can be realized at scale, giving them a competitive edge in a very tight labor market. In XRA's 2021 report, Insights and Industry Trends for HR and Learning Development, we surveyed 250 HR professionals and found that 81% of HR professionals have already widely adopted XR for learning and development. And 61% of those surveyed believed XR will help them provide expanded work opportunities for talent located throughout the US. Given the increased use of XR in hybrid workplaces, Pete developed the Inclusive XR and Hybrid Work Toolkit to help employers better understand how to consider accessibility when procuring and implementing XR tech. The toolkit provides tips on fostering a culture of inclusion and accessibility, engaging an accessibility dialogue between procurement, consultants, and suppliers, and getting involved in community efforts like XR Access. We're so excited to see enterprises like Accenture adopting XR with inclusion in mind. In a moment, Accenture will talk about their own enterprise metaverse, known as the Nth Floor, which are virtual environments they created to bring Accenture people together to meet, collaborate, and learn in new ways. Whether hosting meetings or socializing, the metaverse is a versatile, scalable solution for bringing a geographically distributed workforce together with disability inclusion, and accessibility in mind. And now we'd like to welcome our keynote speakers, Jackie Madison and Matarsol Vienna Salerno. As Director of Product Accessibility, Jackie Madison is responsible for optimizing and scaling global accessibility practices into the fabric of digital experiences at Accenture. She enables employees, partners, and clients to build, buy, and deliver solutions that contribute to its lasting culture of equitable digital access and inclusion. Marisol Viana Salerno manages inclusion, accessibility, and equitable product and program development across Accenture's enterprise metaverse, The Nth Floor, enabling experiences that allow all employees to participate and thrive. Prior to that, Marisol spent the last two decades working in various roles across the company's IT team. Welcome, Jackie and Marisol. Thank you, Bill. Thank you, Liz. Hi. Accenture is the first enterprise to scale extended reality and the metaverse while championing digital accessibility and the inclusive design from ground zero. 
Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, we are so happy to be here today to help kick off the 2022 XR Access Symposium. This is an opportunity for us not only to share, but to learn from some of the most innovative minds in the field. My name is Jackie Madison, and I'm here today with Maricel Veena to share Accenture's journey towards inclusive XR at scale. I am a white woman with shoulder length hair wearing a red sweater. I am currently serving as the Director of Product Accessibility here at Accenture, and XR is my favorite digital product right now. There is still so much work to be done in this area, and we have the ability to build the world that we want to live in and create more immersive and inclusive experiences. So accessibility is very personal to me. It allows my colleagues, some of my family and friends, and even myself to interact with the world fully. And XR presents new ways for us to engage and experience things that we may not have been able to before. This week, I visited my grandmother, uh, the matriarch of our family, uh, who is approaching the end of her life and is unable to do most things independently. I took this trip with my headset in tow, uh, wanting to take her to the perfect beach while she rests comfortably at home. Uh, but because of some of her mobility issues right now, navigating the out-of-the-box controls would have created a very frustrating experience for her. Uh, so we sat and talked instead. Personal use of XR has been the focus of many of the solutions that we see today. Uh, the common perception is that virtual reality and augmented reality remain largely limited to the world of games and entertainment, but things are changing fast. During 2019, industrial spending on these tools began to overtake consumer spending. The acceleration is such that by next year, industrial usage will be triple consumer usage. And the uses of XR are broadening and deepening as firms begin to realize their potential. 68% of consumers said that COVID-19 elevated their expectations of companies' digital capabilities. And 60% said that COVID-19 is changing their relationships with technology as a whole. Companies see XR as a way to address business challenges. They're talking about AR capabilities and applications, with many large enterprises beginning to evaluate and adopt AR or VR immersive solutions as part of their digital transformation strategy. 36% of executives identify removing distance barriers as a driver in their adoption of XR solutions. Industry spending in AR and VR was expected to grow 134% between 2018 and next year. By next year, it's expected that 35% of businesses will adopt XR. Accenture has strived to be the first in the market to power our enterprise human experience with a seamless digital layer, allowing all employees to connect and collaborate. With just shy of 700,000 employees across 50 countries, connection and collaboration has never been more important. Uh, and with numbers like that, the ability to scale shared experiences is so critical. We know that people retain what they learn in immersive VR 33% better, and that task completion can increase by 17%. But really, people are much more emotionally connected and engaged. So uh, here at Accenture, 150,000 of our new joiners have participated in Accenture's new VR program. To date, we've delivered over 60,000 VR headsets to our people, providing omni-connected experiences and learning a lot on the way. Our current research is focused not only on the broader experience, but on in inclusion and accessibility of both the hardware and software. When we think about pushing the boundaries between human ingenuity and technology, we must constantly be challenging the status quo. And not just by going all in on emerging tech, but by curating innovative, impactful, and inclusive experiences that go beyond just functional. We have to dream to delight, and we need to create easily consumable and accessible experiences for all. 
But how can we scale immersive experiences without leaving people behind? Um, Bill, a colleague of ours recently, uh, he, <clears throat> he's a visually impaired employee here at Accenture. He was invited to his team's kickoff uh, in the new VR collaborative environment. Unfortunately, the current immersive experiences, even in 2D, they are inaccessible to users of traditional screen reader software. Lack of accessibility led to friction in this scenario. I think that most of us are here today because this is a difficult problem to solve for. But we need to be imagining a future that is increasingly accessible and designs with these scenarios in mind. Uh, Lisa Bertolini, uh, one of my colleagues I work very closely with, she's an accessibility expert here at Accenture. And uh, she's been using a wheelchair her entire life. She was diagnosed with spinal muscular atrophy when she was six months old. For individuals with SMA, uh, things like walking, breathing, talking, and even swallowing can be difficult. But with the incredible advancements in technology, <clears throat> they've helped Lisa function in her work as an executive and have enabled independent living at home. At work, she finds the combination of her mouth joystick and on-screen keyboard helpful for typing. She uses Dragon Naturally Speaking, um, a speech recognition software, for long text segments. For life at home, she has a robotic arm attached to her electric wheelchair that allows her to independently get a drink, uh, eat food, move her feet for comfort, um, tidy up her home. She has increasingly achieved new milestones of independence in her personal and professional life. Lisa's experiences speak directly to the ways in which evolving technologies can help advance accessibility and inclusion for people with physical disabilities. And she's not alone. <clears throat> Lisa is one of 75% of people with disabilities who expect that technology will play a more prominent role in their lives over the next three years. <clears throat> so what does that mean for your employees and your customers? What might that mean for the design of products and services? So when I said Lisa wasn't alone, I meant it. Uh, we have with 15.1 million working age people living with disabilities in the United States. A failure to design technologies with accessibility in mind may mean costlier adaptations, overall loss in productivity, and a reduction in quality of life. For the modern organization, advancing inclusion by using accessible technologies will help their employees today and in the future. With 20% <clears throat> of employees expected to experience a disability of lasting more than a year, our organizations need to be prepared to bridge those gaps in digital accessibility for their employees, especially as workplace technologies evolve. So uh, now I guess I would like to introduce Marisol um, to talk with you about how Accenture is embodying digital accessibility by pioneering inclusive design at the core of the metaverse and talk to you about some of the amazing work being done with our partners. Thank you, Jackie. Hello, everyone. My name is Marisol Villena. I am the product manager for the inclusive metaverse product within the enterprise metaverse team here at Accenture. First of all, I would like to introduce myself. I am a Latino woman dressing formally to this event. I am based in Spain and I have curly gray hair. I'm very proud of it as it empowers me to feel proud of who I am. But as a for your information, it has not been easy for me to feel comfortable with it. I am joining from our accessibility center here in Spain with some assistive technology that we offer to our employees. And this is a place where they can come and see what we have available for them. This is my first time in the XR Access Symposium. It's a pleasure for me to be with this group of extraordinary people around the globe to discuss inclusive XR at scale and our journey here at Accenture. The inclusive metaverse team, the team that I am representing, is a dedicated team 
created with the goal of ensuring that accessibility, equitable, and inclusive experiences are in the core of what we deliver in the enterprise metaverse. Now that we have started to build it for everyone at Accenture. The first question that I would like to share with the group is how we are building this inclusive metaverse at scale. So let's go to the next slide, please. We are building the inclusive metaverse at scale with inclusive design. Inclusive design aims to include someone in the design process who was previously excluded. And let me use some of the great references from the case of inclusive design developed by Microsoft and some of the principles we are using here in our design teams at Accenture. The advantage of the enterprise metaverse is that it is in its infancy. Therefore, as we deploy it at scale, we can design inclusive experiences as early as possible in this journey so we don't leave anyone behind. Why inclusive design is critical? It's critical because it provides equitable, inclusive, and accessible experiences to everyone, which are the benefit of inclusive design. Let me share four of, of them, amongst others, of inclusive experiences especially applicable to the XR technologies. First ex uh, benefit with increased access. By providing more opportunities to develop better experiences, leveraging XR technologies. Remember, XR opens a new set of opportunities and solutions with this new tech. Second benefit, those experiences are more emotional context. Inclusive design is more than just design. It's understanding of the people, the understanding the humans, their mindset, the impact of the product's design. So in this case, the impact of XR as a new technology that comes to stay at the workplace. It's important now that we are just getting started with an opportunity to build something inclusive from the start. Third benefit, it reduces friction because a more accessible solution and inclusive benefits everyone. Fourth benefit, it is inclusive to all people and prevent our people from being left out from the metaverse. Let me give you a couple of examples that represent that criticality. It was brought to my attention when having, that having a dedicated team for the inclusive metaverse in the enterprise metaverse product to design employee experiences to, de to be developed here and design with consistency across for every Accenture employee, especially considering how employee, the technology is being used here at Accenture because it can be used in such a different way. Otherwise, we risk of failing to attempt to deploy it at scale. Just to highlight the feedback that we got from Lisa or Bill given by Jackie a few moments ago, or the ongoing feedback that we received coming from our accommodation support tool, which is a global tool deployed for everyone at Accenture as a simple way for requesting accommodation support or anything else that anyone might need for being able to do their job. So let's go to the next slide because this is the summary that we have to build on. One size does not fit all, which is why we are connecting with individuals to get a personal insight into their experiences and challenges for brainstorming and, and creating that tailored experience. We seek individuals in Accenture with a permanent, temporary, or situational disability. Or if we refer to the social model of digital inclusion, anyone, where the environment, in this case, the metaverse, needs to be adapted to be able to participate, to be able to access, or, or have a sense of belonging in this case, to feel included. Therefore, it is important for us to tailor those experiences because if not, we risk excluding people with different requirements and falling short for achieving the collective benefits of digital inclusion. So which is the process that we are using 
for building this metaverse at scale. So let's go to the next slide. Okay. We are building the inclusive metaverse at scale as an iterative process with three major components. First step, define. Create focus areas of a scope to get started with. Second step of the process, connect. Engage with individuals from every group to get feedback on their unique experiences. Third step of the process, determine experiences as they become tangible via accessibility features in the products to be used. Let me elaborate a little bit more on those phases. The first step of define, of creating the focus areas. In our case, in Accenture, we have started to focus on auditory, cognitive, mobility, and visual, amongst other areas that we know we exist, or even new ones because of the use of this new technology. For example, a new challenge that we are now aware of is allergies to device materials. Because we have receiving cases of people that are unable to use their VR device because of that, those allergies. So as we recommend today is to use our two version of that experience while we are working with hardware, hardware partners in order to identify potential solutions on devices that can be free of allergens, like probably what we can have available in the health industry. Second step of the process, connect. Engage with individuals from every group to get feedback. We have the power of having a very big employee resource groups. We call them ERGs, as a voice and channel of communication. ERGs at Accenture are organized locally. So we, and we do have presence all over the globe, in Asia Pacific, in Europe, and in America. We feel very proud of the work that the ERGs are doing, and their visibility is a success factor for the integration of our vision with their initiatives. We got feedback from those ERGs up to date, and this is what we are right now processing into feedback that we are going to implement into the products that we are using in the metaverse. Third step of the process, determine experiences. Once we have the feedback, we have the information, which we can share with ecosystem partners and vendors to incorporate it as they continue to define the applications that are going to be used in the metaverse. We share those implementations back to the ERDs so they can get early feedback on the proposed solutions before expanding. And this is how it becomes iterative. We expand on the feedback that we have received and we formulate the path forward. Imple we implement a cadence to meet with those focus groups with continual feedback and discussion. So let's go to the next slide to tell you a little bit of more on where we are. So we are keeping the momentum. We have defined the North Star for the inclusive metaverse product. Our vision is to improve the employee experience of anyone, especially, but not exclusively, diverse employees. By tailoring the standard process to overcome the barriers that anyone may have on the technology to use as part of their day-to-day -day work in the metaverse. We improve the employee experience by incorporating inclusion guidelines baked into a normalized process that need to be followed by the enterprise metaverse teams, creating a lasting culture of digital inclusion. Which are the objective and key results? They represent the baby steps that we are taking towards achieving this North Star that guide us. Those baby steps can be in the form of defining a set of guidelines that need to be used by Accenture or our vendors, or do accessibility testing, leveraging those guidelines that we have just created, or in the inclusive space, defining which are the behaviors that represent inclusion, which is going to be one step forward being accessible. We have set attainable goals because this is a journey. 
And the first step of this journey is get to square zero. And we will continue to grow after that. We expect hurdles across this journey. Knowing that XR is in a very early stage, we know that we are trailblazers as part of this journey. So we expect hurdles as we define the path that then everyone else can then follow. Those hurdles can be in the form of technology readiness or adoption to the new work that we are going to do with this modern new technology. And we will in a process where we celebrate success. It's important for us to celebrate the important milestones that we have achieved during this journey. And I am bringing two examples that represent those milestones that we have achieved. So let's go to the next slide. Okay. Given that Accenture champions inclusive design with ecosystem partners and pushing innovation beyond limitations, I am bringing the two examples that are displayed in the images that I am presenting. The first image is about Telspin. Telspin is a partner for immersive learning that we are using in Enterprise Metaverse. This example represents how we approach accessibility when working with partners and vendors. It's important to highlight that this is not a single company effort. We work with partners and we push them to ensure that the product to be used in Accenture should, must be accessible following the accessibility guidelines. So in other words, we are really pushing the entire IT ecosystem. We have been seeing this when we have been managing previous relationship based on the work that we have been doing in accessibility in the past. And this is what the process that we are going to follow going forward when we implement the technology that we are going to use in the metaverse. The second image that we have in this screen is about a person from our team in Brazil. His name is Sergio. He's blind and he has been developing interesting solutions for navigation that we are going to explore on how to leverage for the enterprise metaverse. The difference in this example that is that in this case, the solution is built within Accenture. So let's go to the next slide to talk a little bit more about the solution that Sergio has, has created. The first question that I would like to share with all the group here is, what is augmented reality for the visual impaired? And this was the first challenge that Sergio had when he joined the Accenture's Liquid Studio. He shared his perspective of what augmented reality is. And Sergio built an ultrasound device and an app to help augment his senses. He did not have any haptic devices by that time, but he improvised using a couple of mobile phone vibration motors in a wristband to show him direction and guide him using spatial sound. After the initial version of the app, Sergio worked using a 3D audio in a smart glass to help him navigate in unknown places by identifying objects, distance, direction. Sergio's perception of depth in the 3D audio is more accurate than mine, which makes the technology especially important for screenless navigation scenarios. So let's play a video where Sergio can explain a little bit more in detail about this solution that he has built. Can we please play the video? I'm Sergio Faria, I've been 20 years in Accenture, I'm blind. É... Sérgio, e o que é realidade aumentada para você? A realidade aumentada, para mim, é quando eu consigo obter informações da, do meu entorno, do mundo à minha volta, além dos meus sentidos. Uma coisa que pode exemplificar bem isso é quando eu cheguei aqui, nós tivemos, começamos a discutir várias MVPs que estavam em desenvolvimento e tivemos uma ideia de fazer um, um, um artefato que uh, pudesse detectar obstáculos e facilitar a locomoção de pessoas com deficiência. Nós fomos começando a testar, tem alguma coisa na minha direita, na parede, eu virei, agora eu estou indo reto, opa, comecei a detectar alguma coisa na minha frente, peguei um novo caminho, alguma coisa na minha esquerda. 
esquerda, vou buscar um caminho central aqui, que eu percebi que não tem mais obstáculos. Aqui eu percebi já algo à minha frente. Né? Em lugares que tem baixa visibilidade, que tem é, necessidade de, de desligar ou de acionar equipamento, de, de resgatar pessoas em lugares de risco, em lugares com, com muito baixa visibilidade ou nenhuma visibilidade. Quer dizer, existe um potencial muito grande. Além disso, várias outras funcionalidades podem ser acopladas e melhorar ainda mais, como reconhecimento de imagem, geolocalização, para que a pessoa saiba exatamente aonde ela está, indoor e outdoor, onde é, o, o equipamento em si tem um grande potencial de evolução. Em cima de tudo, é uma boa prova de conceito. Great. So Sergio will continue to work in that POC. But now what I would like to do is I would like to share with you another example. In this case, the example of stealth speed. So let's go to the next slide, please. Okay. So a little bit to get started with, with what is stealth speed. Stealth speed is an immersive learning company. And Accenture is working with stealth speed on pioneering inclusive design of accessibility features for workforce talent development an immersive learning platform, which is Telspin's vision statement. Deliver a reality where fun, effective, and continuous learning drives prosperity for all. A little bit about Telspin's VR training modules. Telspin learning modules enable learners to develop crucial soft skills through role play with virtual human characters through advanced virtual human animations, conversational interactions, and voice input. Telspin content delivers a level of quality and user engagement beyond what is typically possible through role play and remote learning solutions like e-learning or traditional video. So let's go to the, to the next slide to talk about a little bit more about the accessibility features. Telspin approach on accessibility in virtual reality and where they are today. Telspin models are currently in the state of beta testing. And Telspin is in the process of integrating accessibility enabling features. There are three ways how Telspin is enabling accessibility into their XR models. First, via new features. Second, via expanding the functionality of an existing feature. Third, via using a new feature integration through learning design. So in the next slide, I will talk a little bit more about those examples. But before doing that, I wanted to give a brief overview of Telspin accessibility journey. The step one of the process of how Telspin got started into this accessibility journey is by reviewing the XR industry standards. We all know that there is no one place to go for accessibility guidelines in the XR. So we need to pick and choose from different places. So in this case, we can go to the XR Access, the XR Association, the WCAG guidelines, or also Section 508. The second step of the process is to the accessibility team to create a list of requirements. The goal of this preliminary list of criteria is to get an overview of the requirements and propose a preliminary list of solution approaches. This matrix will help empathize with the users and to allow, align how to meet their needs. The third step of the process is the prioritization of the requirements to be further designed and integrated. After considering the short-term and long-term solutions to meet the user's needs, the engineering team evaluates the technical feasibility and scope. And prioritization is just one the way of ordering which one go first because of the impact or the quick wins or the complexity for approaching them. So let's go to the next slide to talk a little bit more in depth on these uh, features. Okay. So the first example that I am bringing today is a new feature, enable accessibility for mobility and speech impairment. So in this as part of the process, Telspin defined 
with what is a minimum viable product of this feature and what is the feature of the future state. So in, the, in this slide, I am sharing two images. The first image represents a training scenario, including a role play of a person asking a question to the trainee. And it, for the trainee, need to answer with you selecting one of the three options presented. In the current approach, for selecting the correct answer, the trainee used voice input for the selection. But the accessibility feature incorporates that now they have the option to additionally to voice input, Telspin implemented gaze input. So now Telspin gives the option to use gate, gaze for input the selection of the correct answer. And this is what I am displaying in the second image, which is the same role play scenario, but in this case, how the person can select the option is using gaze input. Accessibility is about giving alternatives. If we use as a reference what we know from web accessibility content guidelines and digital experiences, we extrapolate that into the VR technology, which means give additional ways of interactions for the users depending on their needs. And let's go to an example. Great. In this example, we have enabling functionality via existing features. So in this case, enabling accessibility for hearing impairment. I am also here displaying two, two images. The first image represents a conversation happening as part of the training. And in, this, in, and in the solution that they have available today, there is a functionality called Word Highlight displayed at the bottom of the screen, which is being used for reinforcing an important message. And how this can become an accessibility feature. The functionality of Word Highlight is expanded into closed captions. So this can help uh, users with hearing impairment, or as a matter of fact, anyone who is interested in using closed captions, right? So in this case, they are expanding the functionality of an existing feature into new features. So thanks to this modular functionality of current features, they can expand into these features without compromising backward compatibility. So let's go to our next and last example. This is non-feature integration through learning design. And this is not a feature, right? Make accessibility requirements as part of the production pipeline is a requirement. This is, this is a standard practice that needs to be happening during development. And in this ex in third example, we are also presenting two images. The first image represents a role play where the image of a person watching the trainee implicitly expects a response from the trainee. And this is not 100% obvious. So in the second image, the proposed solution includes leveraging a multiple choice option available already in the learning module to make it more understandable what is the expectation from the learning. The trainee is expected to provide input, which is what is happening in the second image. The reduction of cognitive overload can be achieved by providing efficient context on the conversation. This can be either a response of the brutal human or a contextual description of the narrative. So this is all for my side. I hope that you have enjoyed knowing a little bit more about how we are approaching the inclusive metaverse. The examples that we have provided can be used as an inspiration for a potential accessibility features that you would like to implement in your solution and how inclusion in the metaverse looks like. So I would like to now go, in, go back to you, Jackie. Hi, thank you so much, Marisol. Um, I am so proud to be a part of this journey here at Accenture. So to close, I would like to highlight a few key takeaways. Uh, first, you know, we need to incorporate accessibility as early as possible into our digital solutions. Uh, second, this is a journey, but just taking steps every day will bring us closer to the goal of equal access for all. Uh, and lastly, XR solutions are full of opportunities right now to design experiences that will allow everyone to be part of virtual reality. So thank you all for tuning into our discussion. We will now take a break.